What's going on guys? Welcome back to Classic Octane. I am Taylor. This week's Will It Run video is a little bit different than what I normally do, but I think you guys will enjoy it. So you guys probably already know what it is based on the uh, thumbnail and the title, but this is the entire drivetrain, suspension, everything from a C5 Corvette. This particular one is from either 97 or 98, so it is a very early C5, um, but they pretty much are unchanged all the way through like 2004. So this is the complete suspension. You can see it's like the entire front cradle, suspension, brakes, obviously the engine. What makes uh, Corvettes unique is they use this transaxle setup. So this is what's called a torque tube. So it comes out, normally the transmission would be right here, obviously. This goes through, this is basically a drive shaft inside of a metal tube. Comes back here, the transmission is in the back. Uh, this particular one is an automatic. I do kind of wish it was a manual that may, uh, kind of determine what we do with this going forward. Right behind the transmission directly connected is the rear diff. And then of course you can see it goes out to the axles, have the entire rear cradle suspension and brakes and everything as well. So this all kind of dropped right out of the bottom of a C5 Corvette. I bought this off of Facebook Marketplace um, from a guy who just needed the body of the Corvette for a different project. He told me that it was running and driving but it's Facebook Marketplace, so there's no way to know for sure. So the name of the game today is to see if we can get this engine running kind of as it sits, so we can determine the overall condition of this and figure out what to do with it. So this chassis was definitely in an accident on this front driver's side right here. I can tell that from a few things, some more obvious than others, but our sway bar is bent right here. This locating pin that would go up into the subframe is a little bit bent. And then some of our accessories are damaged on this side. So this is normally where the alternator would be. It's completely gone. Power steering pump is broken. The power steering rack is actually broken down here as well. So I'm gonna need to get a lot of that stuff out of the way. And the main thing I need to work on this morning is if you can tell our harmonic balancer, the actual crank pulley itself is broken off. So that definitely needs to be addressed before we can try and turn this thing over and get it to run. So I think that's what we're gonna start with. I'll move on to wiring and all that stuff later in the video, but right now we're going to work on getting this steering rack out of the way so we can try and pull off that crank pulley. Rack and pinion removal went super smooth, no surprises there. So this is what I was after. So I don't know if you could tell from the shot before, but uh, this pulley is completely broken. I only really noticed that once I started kind of checking out the accessories and realized that this entire pulley is pushed back probably half to three quarters of an inch further than it uh, should be. Um, when I went to investigate, you know, very obviously saw that it was broken. All three ears are completely broken on it. So what I need to do now is go ahead and remove the center bolt. This is sometimes very difficult on LSs. It is torqued to well over 200 foot pounds. This particular one, you know, has most likely never been off. So it's been over 20 years since uh, it's been removed. So we'll see how that goes. I'll just get an air impact on there yank that off and then I do have a special puller uh, that's designed for LS engines and uh, with any luck at all we'll be able to pull this off. I apologize for any wind noise obviously we're filming outside and I have the GoPro set up on uh, wind reduction but I'm not sure how well that works just yet. Should be ready to zip this thing off. Easy enough. Now, for the fun part, I have my polar set here. I'll throw a link to this in the description. Basically, it's just going to go around the pulley kind of like that. Not sure which length rod we'll need just yet. Looks like that one. I think that one will actually work. I have this coated with anti seize as well. Let's 
Right, nice and tight now. Take our three quarter inch socket, or ratchet I should say. Easy as that. <laughs> this piece is kind of stuck over the timing cover as well. So I'm gonna pull off that AC bolt, get behind there with a little pry bar and see if we can just gently kind of wiggle it off. But this is definitely the most difficult part. Got behind there with the uh, pry bar and the crank pulley popped right off. No issues whatsoever. There's some marking on the uh, timing cover, but nothing too crazy. You know, we'll look into, depending on what we do with this engine, potentially replacing that, because odds are we'll get in here and do a cam and stuff anyway. That would be the perfect time to replace that, uh, should it need it. What I'm going to move on to now is removing a lot of the electrical, as well as this throttle body. I actually had to steal the throttle body off of the Camaro, because this is a drive-by wire. And the setup I'm going to use to run this um, can only operate a drive-by cable. Actually, you know what? Let me show you the components I'm going to use. So here are the components I'm gonna to use to get this thing running on the trailer. Luckily, I did not sell my old setup out of the Camaro. So this is the full wiring harness and mega squirt ECU that I did have in the Camaro before. Everything should be identical. It's the same engine, basically. It's EV1 injectors, uh, 24X reluctor wheel. It's basically identical. So once we swap in that cable throttle body, it should be the exact same connections I made on the Camaro. Uh, the tune is gonna be off. Um, but it should be fine for the, you know, 30 seconds or so. I'm going to try and run this thing. It doesn't have exhaust, cooling system, charging system. So we're not going to try and run this thing for very long. I'm just trying to do a health check on the engine to make sure there's no internal damage. For fuel, I'm going to use this Phytech command center. I've had this thing on the shelf for years. It came with the Phytech EFI that I had in the Camaro back when we had the small block 350 in it. Um, I didn't actually use it because I put a EFI fuel tank in there at that time. So this has a high pressure EFI, I think it's 340 liter per hour fuel pump. And then it's basically uh, a surge tank. So you can fill that with fuel. It's got a submerged uh, pump in there, feed and return, which is convenient because the 97 and 98 Corvettes uh, have a fuel rail that is feed and return. Later than that, they have a returnless style rail similar to what I have in the Camaro now. So I'll have some power connections for that, jump box for some power as well, little ignition switch and everything for us to be able to turn things on and off. But that should be the core components for what I need. So the only things I'm waiting for right now is I need to get the little quick disconnect to 6AN uh, fuel line connectors, those should be here today, as well as my new crank pulley uh, should be here later today as well. So I'm gonna get to pulling off all this old wiring so we can get this stuff installed. The bulk of the wiring is done. It's really only like five connections once you get all of the sensors plugged in. So don't have my ECU plugged in just yet. Basically we are using the factory power and ground cables that would have went to the battery. That runs down to the starter uh, and then has a little piece off of it that comes down to this little fuse box that I'm using. That is just to be our main power to the ECU, power to our uh, O2 sensor uh, control module. And the last one is turns through the ignition switch into a key on or switched 12 volt source to actually turn the ECU on uh, itself. After that, we just have like two grounds, one for the fuel pump and one for that O2 sensor control module. We'll have a fuel pump output. This um, wiring harness is capable of, I think 30 amps uh, for a fuel pump. So we're just gonna be able to run this fuel pump wire straight out of the ECU right onto the positive side of our fuel pump uh, canister. 
And that's really gonna be it. So our main jump box is of course gonna connect there. I am going to be using my little trigger system you guys have made, seen me use before to activate our starter solenoid to actually turn everything over. So right now it's just a waiting game for our parts to come in. So I mentioned a minute ago, waiting for the crank pulley and then also the quick disconnect to 6AN fuel lines. Once those are here, I think we're ready to hook everything up and see how it goes. So let's uh, cross our fingers that those parts show up uh, soon. Well, I'm not sure how well you can hear me because unfortunately the one day I film outside, it's uh, like 25, 30 mile an hour winds. But I have uh, most of the wiring hooked up, but I've discovered a problem. When I go to turn everything over, I don't know if you saw that, but the whole engine is moving. And then it kind of hits a tight spot. I don't want to do it too much more. And uh, I don't know if I showed this earlier, but the bell housing is cracked. And what I think is happening is there's probably a little bit of like downward uh, torque or force, we're going to call it, on that. Um, I don't know if the torque converter is in the back or if it's just the flywheel or what it is under there, to be honest with you. But I don't like it. I don't want to, I definitely don't want to run it that way. Um, so I think I'm going to have to separate these two. Um, which shouldn't be too terribly difficult, I don't think. Uh, but I'm gonna look up how to kind of separate that. We're gonna pull the whole bell housing off and everything uh, just so we can have the engine kind of separated and we'll be able to run it hopefully from there. So a little bit of an unforeseen problem, but nothing we can't address. I think the last time you guys saw me, we were taking the torque tube off. I got that done and then now it's the next day and I've gone ahead and hooked up my fuel system as well. So this is kind of what that looks like. Our little dis quick disconnect to 6AN came in. So we have a feed and then a looped back return line. See how that goes. Very simple power and ground run directly over the engine. I also went ahead and hooked up the ECU and have my laptop as well because I think we are actually ready to turn the key on this thing and see what happens. So I'm gonna hook you guys up on a tripod and hopefully this thing makes some noise. All right, I'm gonna turn my key. Fuel pump should be on. Our ECU is connected. Let's see if it makes any noise. neighbors are all staring at me thinking I'm a crazy person right now. They're not wrong. I just went around with my uh, thermometer and checked every exhaust port just to make sure it was running on all eight just because it's really hard to tell with open headers and everything else going on uh, and it seems like it is. At risk of my wife yelling at me again I'm gonna try and start it up a second time. Well, I'm gonna call that a huge success. I can, <laughs> I can feel my neighbors staring at me through their blinds. I don't see them, but I know they're there. 
but they're, they're probably used to my shenanigans by now anyway. Um, that was uh, awesome. That's exactly what I wanted to do. It seems like it's running on all eight. Wasn't a huge amount of smoke that came out. It sounded like it was smooth. You know, when you buy a um, kind of unknown condition engine like we did here, you just have no idea what you might encounter. So I am ecstatic that it uh, seems to be a very, very good engine for us. Um, I'll probably go through and do a compression test and stuff on it um, since I have kind of everything hooked up to do that. So I won't drag you guys through that, but I'm gonna do a compression test on it just to um, kind of verify that everything else looks good to go. And then I have to figure out what I wanna do as far as storing this thing. I wanna take it off the cradle so I can store the engine inside my shop, or I don't know, we'll figure that out at a, a later date, but. So far, great success. Well, that's what I'm gonna call it on this one, guys. I apologize if there was a lot of wind noise. I know I've mentioned that a few times, but with how windy it's been the last two or three days here, I think it's inevitable that some of the audio was probably messed up. I hate that, but it's you know the cards we were dealt uh, with having to film outside. So I appreciate you guys watching all the way to the end of the video. I know this Will It Run was a little bit different than what I normally do, but uh, exciting nonetheless. So I appreciate it, and I'll see you guys in the next video.